Hi, my name is Tomasz and you're watching Casual DIY channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this really versatile jig for your table saw. You can make splines for your picture frames and boxes, half lap joints, bridle joints and tenons and probably a few other things that I've not thought about yet. So check out the video. Also in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set this jig up and how to use it. So make sure to watch the whole video. For this project I'm going to be using a laminated chipboard, it's just something I had to hand in my workshop and to be honest it's just cheap to get. And now if you've got nice 18mm thick uh, plywood definitely go for that. In total I'm going to be cutting out three main pieces for the whole body of the jig and as you've seen I've been using my mitre saw and now my table saw. Now the main fence, the size of that is 46.5 centimeters by 30 centimeters. Now the other two pieces, uh, the sizes of those will be dictated by the size of your fence. So unfortunately you'll have to do your measurements there. On top of that I'm going to be cutting four pieces that will become the braces at the back of the whole jig to make sure everything's nice and stable and square. Now as you can see in the main body, the fence itself, I'm cutting two channels. These will accommodate uh, T-tracks I've got prepared for this project. Now obviously do it in several passes uh, so you don't strain your router. In the middle of this fence I'm going to be cutting out a hole that will accommodate a clamp for bigger pieces, bigger items that you would like to, um, you know, cut on your table saw using this jig. First of all, we are making a hole in the middle and after that we, I'm going to be heading over to my bandsaw to cut out a channel through which uh, the body of the clamp will go through, but I'll show you how that works a bit later on. Now to attach the T-Tracks I'm using two-part epoxy, it is one of my favorite ways of actually doing this and I've been using this method for um, a few few projects and it works absolutely fine. Uh, there's basically not enough body to uh, drop in a screw and screw the T-Tracks um, to the fence itself. Obviously you know you can laminate two pieces uh, together and then you'll have enough thickness but it's just I think using the five minute epoxy is absolutely fine. After applying the glue add a few clamps and leave it for a few minutes to dry and now it's time to put everything together now I'm going to be using some clamps to hold everything in place for me and the top piece I'm actually going to be using CA glue just to whack it in place stabilize it until I can drive in some screws and secure it that way I just find it uh, a little bit easier to do it this way especially where the top bit is actually above the level of my uh, fence, the table saw fence, as I do have two bolts that are sticking out and, you know, I just had to do it that way. And for me, it was the easiest way to do it. Now I'm going to be adding four pieces. Uh, they will be acting as stabilizers for the fence itself. Again, I'm using some CA glue just to uh, stabilize them in place as it would be fairly difficult to actually clamp it. After the glue dries, I'm going to reinforce it with some screws. This will add greater stability to the whole fence and the whole jig, making sure everything's at nice and perfect 90 degrees. Now it's time to attach the fence of your jig to the other part that we just completed. Obviously make sure that the fence of your jig is at 90 degrees to the tabletop of your table so it's absolutely it's a necessity. Otherwise, you know, the cuts you're going to be making, they're not going to be true or straight. Right then, it's now time to make the first addition to this jig, or a straight fence like that, uh, that will utilize the T-tracks. So first of all, um, I'm just going to be marking it up uh, to allow me to make some holes for the bolts, 
and some star knobs so we can basically attach this to our fence now the piece i'm using here is basically an off cut i found in my workshop it's two pieces of 18 millimeter plywood sandwiched together the size of that is 26.5 centimeters long and 4.5 centimeters wide so super simple solution i'm going to be using a square as you can see to make sure when i put it on my jig is at perfect 90 to the tabletop of my saw and um, so that will give us the perfect results that we are after okay nice and stable and basically as you can see i can add any quick clamp to this making sure my workpiece is nice and secure i think it's a very cool addition and you know it gives you that extra ability of clamping maybe a bit more awkward items or larger items as well Next, I want to have the ability to cut splines and picture frames or boxes with this jig. So I'm cutting out two pieces. Uh, both ends of those pieces will be at 45 degree angles. And the total size of those two pieces is 26.5 centimeters long, 4 uh, centimeters wide. And the material I'm using is ash. So it's hardwood uh, at 1.5 centimeters in thickness. On the main body of our jig i've put a line i hope you can see that um just with a pencil that will be an indication where these two pieces will stop okay so they're not going to go all the way down as i don't want the blades to go through them that's they are just the support uh, for the picture frame or your box okay so i'm now marking them to allow me to preserve a couple of holes in those so i can attach them with some bolts and star knobs to the whole jig itself. I'm also attaching some toggle clamps to these that will allow me a quick way of clamping the picture frame to my jig, making uh, it a lot quicker and safer to use. And that's how it all comes together. Very nice, easy and quick to set up. Make sure you do have that line so you are at the correct place um, every single time. And position your uh, picture frame make sure it's at the um, end of your jig toggle clamps in place nothing's gonna move on you so let's make a cut nice and simple to use as i said the toggle clamps actually uh, make it work super super quick uh, make sure to set up the correct depth of your blade uh, so rise it to the position you need for your picture frame to be and obviously the position where the blade needs to go through your picture frame as well. As you can see, it's a super quick and easy way of reinforcing your picture frames. Um, it's just one of the ways you can use this jig for. Look at that, absolutely perfect cut. Now let's make a tenon. I'm just using my uh, small sled for my table saw to cut out the parameter of our cut, establishing how um, long the tenon is going to be. So I'm just making four cuts uh, around the piece of timber I've got. A super quick and easy way of doing that. I do recommend having a small um, table sled like that as well. After that, we can place the piece onto our jig that we just made. As you can see, I'm just using a different method of clamping it to our jig and we are making the cut. Obviously, make sure that the blade is in the correct position, i.e. the height of it, um, so you are getting the tenon that you actually want. As you can see, very nice cut. I'm just doing the other side, clamping it securely making the cut and now i'm going to use the quick clamp uh, to actually clamp it down when i'm doing this size it's just a little easier and a little bit more um, secure that way and that's it job done your perfect tenant done in no time at all on your table saw 
Now, obviously, you can do a lot more with this jig. For example, I'm doing a half lap joint, but you can do a bridle joint and many, many more. It's just a very versatile jig that you can use with your table saw uh, in a very uh, quick, efficient and safe way. And there you go, a perfect half lap. And there you go guys, quite a versatile uh, jig for your table saw. And to be fair, that's just a few things you can actually use it for. Thanks to the D-Tracks and additional clamping capacity, you can actually add another layer of add-ons to this jig to make different types of cuts for your projects. So sound off down below in the comment section um, with some other ideas on how to use this jig, what else you would add to it. Now I hope you enjoyed this little project. If you did, drop me that like button down below and please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so yet. Now I do have really cool playlists with some fantastic videos for you with jigs for your workshop, workshop related projects and everything else. They should pop up just right here for you um, so go and have a look, click those, and maybe a video will pique your interest. So I'll hope to see you on those videos there. Take care.